Welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to talk about all things that you need to know when owning a house in Colorado Springs, Colorado. And if you want to know other things about working, living, eating in Colorado Springs, make sure you subscribe to our channel and um, leave us a comment with any other topics you'd like us to cover. Let us um, know. We specialize in people re relocating to our area. So if you need a real estate agent, feel free to reach out to us. Um, all our contact information is in the link in our description of the YouTube channel. So home ownership in Colorado Springs. What do you need to know to survive? What do and I need what to know? <laughs> should you expect? So first thing is winterization and taking care of the house and the exterior. Mm -hmm. So we have a cold climate. We have four seasons. We have snow from October to May, sometimes Ish. June. And the most important thing about the winter is disconnect your hose. Well, drain your lines. Yeah. And then disconnect so, your, your hose. So how does one drain their lines? Call somebody. <laughs> yeah. So usually around October. There's, yeah, there's a way to do it. Uh, you'll just need like an air compressor and know where you're going to hook it up to. Uh, but basically, you're just draining all your water lines, um, your exterior water lines, not to your house. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, of water. So they'll freeze and then the pipes will burst. Mm -hmm. So in the spring, or in the summer, whenever you turn on your water, mm -hmm. uh, you'll have a huge leak. So you don't want that. Um, but we have a great guy, Tony, who hooks us up every year. Mm -hmm. um, he'll come, he'll drain it out, blow out our sprinkler heads and stuff. Uh, usually doesn't cost more than like 30 to 40 bucks. Mm -hmm. So if anybody's charging you more than that, just shop around, you'll find somebody. There's dozens of people. Uh, on Facebook Marketplace, on Facebook, like the neighborhood uh, pages, they'll all start promoting it around like October-ish, yeah. uh, before the first freeze. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely by Halloween, you'll want to have those lines blown out. And then you usually want to have it turned back on everything safe-ish is usually after Mother's Day is like the cutoff. Yeah. Um, if we do get snow after Mother's Day, just be sure to like cover your plants because most of the stuff will start will have started blooming. Yeah. And always disconnect your hose because if it's, you know, it could be a nice day and then it could get below freezing temperatures. And if you don't disconnect your hose, it can freeze and then it can burst and then the water will come inside your house. So another thing is getting your driveway and cement areas ready for winter. A lot of stores promote the what do they call that? The ice sand, melt. the ice melt stuff. Mm -hmm. Do not use it. It will mm -hmm. pit your cement. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll see like cement with like little baby holes. It looks like BB holes. Well, uh, it, like eats at it. Yeah. So you'll start seeing that uh, and then it'll start cracking really bad. So never ever use that on your, on your cement. The other thing is your joints in the driveway. Mm -hmm. um, just try to seal them easy i don't know two three four dollar bottle of um self-leveling like sealant mm -hmm. and just ask anybody at home depot around here they'll they'll know um they'll start selling out of it when it starts getting cold but mm -hmm. just try to do that um try to clear out as much as the dirt it doesn't have to be absolutely 100 percent clean but mm -hmm. just try to seal it just so no water gets under the cement and then they have actual sealers for the cement you just take a paint roller and just kind of paint it on uh, it's just like a clear, it looks like water almost. Uh, and it lasts like 10 years, 10, 15 years, that mm -hmm. sealant, as long as you do it right. Mm -hmm. uh, we did our whole driveway like eight years ago and we haven't had to redo it yet. Um, and part of that sealing the surface is that we just said don't use like ice melt. If you need something for traction, like if it's icy, use sand or kitty litter because yeah. it won't like eat at your concrete. But when you're driving, you're still driving around and they use the more aggressive stuff on the road. So when you come back home, like your driveway will still be subjected to those chemicals. So that's why we just recommend sealing the surface and the joints. Um, in Colorado, we have two types of concrete. We have cracked concrete and concrete that is about to crack. Because yeah. um, water can get into those joints and, you know, it expands, contracts, 
we have hot days, cold days, and it's just really tough on those exterior surfaces, the concrete, um, your driveways, inside of the garage, any patios that you have. So that's the best way to take care of it. Seal mm -hmm. the joints, um, seal, the, seal the surface, itself. and use either sand or kitty litter if you need some kind of traction yeah. for ice. And shovel and, your driveway. Yeah. So the ice, because once you drive over it, it's just going to be ice. Mm -hmm. So if you can just shovel the fresh snow, that's ideal. Easy way to not have to shovel is buy a house that either faces west or south. Not north. Not north and north, not east. North, you're going to have snow probably all year round. <laughs> yeah, west and south, the snow will m melt the fastest. Yeah. Um, like we're, we face south, east, east. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes if we just get like a light dusting, the snow will melt before we can even shovel it. Mm -hmm. Whereas our neighbors across the street who face the wrong direction, yeah. they'll have the snow and they'll have to shovel it. Yep. Another one in Colorado, we have basements. Why do we have basements? Because they're awesome. No, <laughs> it the freezes and. Uh, the builders have to dig below the frost line for the foundation so they're already down there so a lot of times they'll dig out even more and make a basement and it's pretty inexpensive but with that you can get flooding in the basement and the ground in colorado moves because it's clay sand like the material expands contracts goes up and down so there are a few things that you need to know about taking care of your basement in Colorado Springs. One of them would be covering your window wells. Yep. And Ooh, not just using water. the great ones. Cause they have um, graded window wells that like have holes in them and then critters can still get in, water can get in, snow can get in. But what we have is like, what would you call it? Just a plastic cover. Yeah. Um, you still have to have, so we have pins on the inside. Mm -hmm. So per the fire code, you have to be able to egress um, from that window well. So we have pins on the inside of it so nobody from the outside can open it or try to break in. Uh, but if you're on the inside, you have long pins that you can just easily pull out and lift and uh, egress if, if need be. But they are, they're not water tight. So if water rises up to the edge of it, it'll tip in. They block the water from just falling in mm -hmm. uh, from like rain or snow. Uh, and even when the snow melts, we'll get a little bit of moisture in there, but nothing crazy. Yeah. Nothing enough to like get to the windows and mm -hmm. stuff. But if you don't have covers on your window wells, usually each window well itself has a drain. Make sure that it's clear of debris and leaves and dirt. Some rodents sometimes get in there and start mm -hmm. building around there. Uh, just make sure that the drain is clear so that the water doesn't pull. Uh, we've seen nightmares where <laughs> the water's halfway up through the window and starts leaking in through the windows. Um, people sometimes have like mud slides because their yards aren't graded right. Uh, and they go into those window wells because they're not covered. We have had, I mean, it doesn't happen often, but when we have like heavy, heavy rains um, and just the drainage around the city can't keep up, it can get in there. So just an extra step for protection is to have a window well that doesn't allow a ton of water in there. Um, another thing that we do is we have like, I don't know if you have Ring or whatever, but mm -hmm. there are different companies that Ring for sure does it where you can get like a moisture meter puck yeah, and you can leave it in your basement. And then if it detects moisture, like an alarm goes off. So um, we don't use, I mean, we use our basement a fair amount, but some people might not use their basement as much. And if you don't go down there, you don't know like if your water heater leaked into the house. Yeah if there's other leakage from the windows or anything like that. So good idea if you don't think you're gonna use the basement a ton. So we went over the soil here and that it moves a lot. So with that, it cracks the concrete and the foundation of your home in the basement usually is concrete. So when that moves, they have control joints, but even that like it cracks and the slab in the basement can move. Do not put tile in your basement Take because it, it doesn't have the ability to move. A lot of times you'll see carpet or like um, vinyl floor that can kind of move as the slab moves over time. But tile is a horrible idea. 
And sure enough, this tile was already like cracking and moving. So another thing that you need to know about basements is that the framing in the basement is floating. So the basement walls don't sit directly on the slab because as we discussed, it moves. So it would just move the walls too much. And instead, the framing is actually hung from the first floor joists and comes down so that if the concrete underneath moves, there's some give. Whereas if the framing was just sitting on the concrete, it would just crack the walls too much. That's uh, um, one of the houses I went to go show. Mm -hmm. They didn't have the floating walls framing. or framing. Yeah. And you could literally, half of the entire house, you walk to a certain point in the kitchen and it just sloped down. Yeah. And you'll never see it in photos, but as soon as you walk in, you can mm -hmm. put a marble down and it'll hit the back wall. So yeah. just look out for that. So if you have a basement or if you buy a house with a basement and you see that, that is normal. If you buy a house with a basement and it's not finished, which is common here, um, just be sure that you look up the code or you hire someone that knows what they're doing so that you get the right type of framing in there to protect your home value and just that it's done right. So in Colorado, <laughs> the soil, we have a lot of decaying granite, rocks, stones in our soil. And when, I think it's uranium actually, when that decays and it releases a gas, which is radon, and so we have in Colorado Springs and in Colorado in general, you run the risk of having radon gases in your homes, more so if you have a basement because they dug down into the basement. So now you're more exposed to those radon gases. So easy thing to do is get an inspector or order a radon testing kit to test the radon in your home. If the radon levels are high, they will put in a radon mitigation system, which will help suck that radon, those gases out of your house. Um, and usually you'll do that in the inspection when you're mm -hmm. buying the home. Yeah. Uh, in the inspection of the home, they'll do a radon test. That way you can ask the sellers to install that system for you mm -hmm. uh, before you move in. If they agree. Yeah. yeah. If not, then you'd pay for it yourself. It's about $1,500 to $2,000. Mm -hmm. So you could have a street where one house has high radon levels and then the next house next to you doesn't. It just depends on what's underneath you. So yeah. there's not like a blanket statement that you could say, well, like on this street, they have high radon levels. It really just depends. Um, but definitely something that you can take care of, mitigate. Another tip would be to open your windows and air out the home to get those gases out of the house. Of course, it's not as effective as a radon mitigation system, but it can help as well. All right, another thing you need to know is that we are very dry. We have a dry climate, high altitude. Um, Colorado is one of the highest, is the highest state in the United States. So with that, your house is gonna be dry if you're coming from a humid climate climate like Florida, Texas, and you're used to that humidity that takes care of your hair and your skin. You move to Colorado, your skin is going to be dry, your hair is going to be dry, everything around you is going to be dry. Your floors in your house are going to be dry. So to combat that, um, have a humidifier installed. If you can't afford or don't want to do that or don't have that, get like a humidifier that you can sleep with. Um, the humidifiers in Colorado Springs, they are attached to the furnace. So they usually only run in the winter when it's the driest. So if your furnace is running, your humidifier is running. So get that checked out every year. Make sure you clean out your filter every year, but that helps a ton with, you know, dry skin. Um, and it actually also, if you have hardwood floors in your house or your kitchen cabinets, the dryness will cause everything to kind of shrink. Um, and you'll start seeing gaps in like your cabinetry and your wood floors you, if it's real hardwood. Um, again, another thing to combat that is if you have a humidifier kind of conditions your floors, helps with that um, less contracting or shrinking with the lack of humidity. So something that's very surprising <clears throat> to most when they come here is that only about 30 to 40% of houses have central air. <laughs> so. If you want a home with AC, um, it can be added usually to most homes after the fact. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but if that's a deal breaker for you, make sure you let your agent know. It does get hot enough in the summer, I feel like for like a month or two. We run hot, well, he runs hot, the kids yeah. run hot. I get cold easily, but we have AC in our house. But um, when you go to build a house, it's an option. Mm -hmm. It's not there automatically. And resale homes, only about 30 to 40% of homes have AC. So if that's something that you're wanting, um, make sure you specify that. So we went over the basics of what you need to know when buying or owning a house in Colorado Springs. If you have any other topics that you'd like us to discuss, leave a comment below, send Let us, us a message, and we'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.